It's about 1.12 and that's a good enough time to get started on recording another little video for Chem 230. We've been talking about different constitutional isomers of alkanes where the atoms in the molecule can be connected in different ways giving us different molecules with the same formula. And so one of the really good instructional examples would be to look at hexane, which is hex means six, so six carbons in a saturated hydrocarbon, C6H14. Now there are five different ways to connect the atoms up and have different isomers. And so what I'm gonna do is draw the skeletal structure for each, give you the systematic name for each, and then you'll understand, hopefully, how to construct different isomers of something with the same formula. Our starting point for me, my starting point, is always the same. I draw all of the carbons in a long consecutive chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row. And that would be just hexane itself. The parent compound, simple, straightforward, easy enough. Everybody should get the first isomer of hexane, just put six carbons in a row. Now when you want to attach them differently, you can shorten the chain, right, shorten the chain, and then you'll have carbons that you sort of removed to put as branches off of the carbons. So this guy here, I have five carbons in a row, so it's going to be a pentane, in the systematic naming system because the longest number of consecutive carbons attached to each other is five. So one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row. And off the second carbon, I have a one carbon chain. So this molecule would be called 2-methylpentane and that's one of the isomers of hexane. So something with the same formula, C6H14, but different connections of the atoms, giving it a different shape, different melting point, making it a different compound. Then I can take a five carbon chain, and rather than putting the methyl on the second carbon, I can put it on the third carbon. And so in our chain, one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row is the longest consecutive chain therefore it's a pentane. And now we have a one carbon group, which is a methyl, hanging off of the third carbon in the chain. So three methyl pentane is one of the isomers. Now at this point, you might get into a groove and say I'm gonna put one on the second carbon, one on the third carbon, and one on the fourth carbon. But with this molecule, the fourth carbon is the same as the second carbon in that it's the second in from an end. So if we were to look at just the pentane, five carbons in a row, which end is the first one is completely ambiguous, right? You could start, this it could be number one, or the other one could be number one. So carbon two and carbon four are the same, they're identical, Carbon one and number five are the same. So if we added a carbon to number two, it would be the same as adding carbon to number four. It'd just be second to the end. So if you drew out something you would call four methylpentane, it would just be two methylpentane sort of drawn backwards. So this guy is the same as two methylpentane. I just sort of drew it backwards and thought of the numbering system incorrectly because you're always going to number your chain. So the substituent is closest to the front end. So we could say that this was 4-methylpentane, but it's really just 2-methylpentane, named differently. And that takes a little while to get used to, but if you practice enough examples, you should see how to name these and how to draw them. The other thing that should be clear to us is if we have five carbons in a row and we add a carbon to the first carbon and try to make one methylpentane, we just make the chain longer. 
So although this might look different than the hexane to us, free rotation allows this carbon to move around the molecule. It's the same as the original hexane, it's just drawn a little differently. So we've exhausted the possibilities of adding a single carbon to a five carbon chain. So now we're gonna go to a four carbon chain and add two carbons to that. And so one of the ways to do that is to add the two methyl groups to the second carbon, right? So now we have a butane because our longest connect consecutive chain is one, two, three, four carbons in a row. So it's a butane. And now we have two one carbon groups, two methyl groups and when I say there's two methyl groups, that makes it a dimethyl butane. So one of the things that's going to be confusing as well is if I say two methyl, am I saying that there are two methyl groups or am I saying the methyl group is on the second carbon? So to keep that from being ambiguous, we use the Greek prefixes to say how many methyl groups and we use numbers to say where those methyl groups are located. So 2,2-dimethylbutane says there are two different methyl groups. One of them's on the second carbon and the other one's on the second carbon. So here's our skeletal structure for butane, four carbons in the longest consecutive chain with two methyl groups, each hanging off the second carbon. And so that's one of the isomers of hexane. If you were to draw the full Lewis structure of this, you'd see we have six carbons and 14 hydrogens attached to it. That would be a good exercise to practice and make sure you understand this. The last possibility is that if we had the butane again with one, two, three, four carbons in a row as the longest chain, And when we try to systematically work things out, we know we can't add another carbon to the first carbon because that just makes the chain longer. So we don't consider that possibility. We can add a branch to the second carbon, right? And then we go, well, where's the next branch going to be? Because we already have four carbons. We have two more to add. If we add another one to the second carbon, it's the same as this. So we're going to put the other branch coming off the third carbon. So now we have, again, two different methyl groups on there. So we call it dimethyl butane, four carbons in a row is the longest chain, two one carbon substituents hanging off, but now one of them's hanging off the second carbon and the other's hanging off the third carbon. So two, three, dimethyl butane. And this is where the language, there's lots of information here. But, four carbons, ane, saturated hydrocarbons. Dimethyl, two methyl groups, one off the second carbon, one off the third carbon. And with some of this naming, I'm not gonna be too picky about the punctuation and grammar here, but whenever you have a number next to a letter in an organic name, you put a dash to separate them. So two methyl, three methyl, 2-dimethyl, 3-dimethyl, between the number and the letter goes a dash. When you have two numbers, you separate them with a comma. So 2-2-dimethyl or 2-3-dimethyl, you put a comma between the two numbers. So there's five isomers. One, two, three, four, five isomers of hexane these are the five unique isomers. If you try to draw anything else with six carbons attached and saturate with hydrogens, you'll get one of these molecules. It's that simple.